Hey guys, Pastor Jurgen here. I'm so glad you're tuning into one of our powerful messages that is guaranteed to absolutely elevate your life to another level. At Awaken, we only want to preach fresh, real, powerful to help you grow stronger in your walk with God, develop your faith so you can take more territory. I'm praying that God blesses you and enriches your soul as you listen to this amazing word from God. God bless you. Merry Christmas, church. Pastor Jurgen here. What a privilege to be able to share a few thoughts around Christmas, the Christmas message. I honestly believe it's one of the most powerful messages that you will ever hear today because it is the most powerful message that has ever been transmitted from heaven to earth to all mankind. So I'm going to pray that I don't mess this assignment up today. So the title of my message today is The King of Kings. The King of Kings. Who is Jesus? He is the King of Kings. In Matthew chapter 2, there's a most powerful story of what the Bible says, the Magi, the wise men, these kings who have traveled, who have sojourned from the east, and they arrive in Jerusalem with a question. Their question is, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east. If you know anything about the story, Herod loses his mind. Herod is incensed because he ain't got no star. He, he had to fight, he had to murder, he had to manipulate, he had to compromise, he had to sell his soul to become King Herod, to, to have authority, power, and privilege. And here is a guy who did not, doesn't have to do anything. He's born to be king, and he's got a freaking star in the galaxy, in the cosmos, confirming his destiny, his assignment, his anointing, his mantle. Are you kidding me? And so you probably know the story that Herod has all the babies under three, all the male children under three, murdered by his henchmen to try to wipe out the threat. Well, I want to talk to you today about the fact that these wise men from the east traveled to Jerusalem, the holy city, asking the question, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? Because Jesus was born to be not just king, but these were three kings that arrived. He was the king of kings. Not only was he the king of kings, but what fascinates me about this story is that the scribes, the priests, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the religious instructors of the law couldn't see. They couldn't see. Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Jesus was born in Israel. Jesus was born in their midst, and they couldn't see. It took kings from another region. In fact, it was a prophetic picture that the Gentiles, the people outside of Israel, outside of Judaism, would also come to Christ. And that's the beginning of the Christmas message. The Christmas message was that God from his chosen people, the Jewish people, would raise up a Messiah who wouldn't just die for the Jewish nation, but would die for all the nations of the world so that all of mankind could come into the family of God. The first thing I need you to understand is that religion loses Jesus in tradition. The religious leaders did not see Jesus like they were blinded because in Jesus' commentary, he says, you guys are more caught up with the traditions of men than you are the word of God. Jesus was the word become flesh and they couldn't see him. This may come as a shock to you, and please forgive me if this is the first time you heard it, but Jesus wasn't born with a halo. He wasn't born with a halo, and Jesus didn't walk around everywhere going, doing little benedictions everywhere. He wasn't a little baby sitting on Mary's knee doing benedictions. Jesus was born the son of a carpenter. He grew up without a halo. That's why Judas had to say, the guy that I kiss, the guy that I give a kiss on the cheek, that's the Messiah, arrest him. He didn't say the guy with the halo, duh. The, the Messiah is the one that I give a kiss on the cheek because Jesus looked like everybody else. Mary and Joseph, who were Jesus's parents or at the very least custodians of Jesus Christ, 
lost Jesus when they went to a religious feast in Jerusalem. So even the tradition of going to religious feasts and everything, you can lose Jesus. So let me give you a couple of quick thoughts about these these kings who come. The first thing is that they come because they saw his star in the heavens. In other words, these kings realized that even though they were kings of their entire kingdoms and kings of a particular region, they realized that there was a kingdom far greater and far beyond their kingdom that they were still submitted to, that they still had to be accountable to. I want you to understand this. You may get to the top of the pops. You may get to the top of the charts. You may get to the top of your sphere of influence. You may be the best in whatever field you're in. Can I just tell you, there is a God in heaven who is not just king. He is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And you and I are wise to recognize that he is the sovereign and he is the the greatest authority from whom comes all authority. The second thing that we recognize about these kings is these kings came to honor and worship. They came to honor and worship. These are two distinctives of heaven. The culture of the kingdom of heaven is a kingdom of honor and a kingdom of worship. If people say, well, I don't really see Jesus This is what I've discovered. There are people that don't understand honor and people who don't understand worship. Jesus is revealed through honor and worship. As you and I begin to honor and as you and I begin to worship, even as we sing Christmas carols, it's amazing how many people have an experience of God as they sing these beautiful songs, especially we three kings of Orient are, bearing gifts we traverse afar, field and fountain, moor and mountain following yonder to star and they bring the gifts of gold of of frankincense and of myrrh because they come to honor they come to worship because they honor and because they worship they see god i honestly believe there are two two great things that a human being can see in this life the first one is to see god the second one is to see yourself how god sees you So many people live broke down, beat down, because they have a poor self-image. They have a poor reflection. But when you see God, he will then show you who you are, and you'll see yourself through his eyes as somebody so valuable that he gave his only begotten son to hang on a cross and die so that your sins could be taken away, so that mercy, grace, and forgiveness and everlasting life could be extended to you. The third thing was that these kings didn't just see him, but they brought gifts because they saw his his character, they saw his person, they saw his mission, and they saw his destiny. So they brought three gifts. I'm not sure if you remember the gifts, but in Matthew chapter 2, it tells us that they brought gifts of gold, gifts of frankincense, and gifts of myrrh. Gold speaks with divinity. Gold speaks of a king. They recognized that he was a king. Kings traversed in gold. Kings fared in gold. Kings had the gold. The gold of the land was was gathered by the kings. Quite often, the most elaborate kings had golden utensils. So king and gold, they recognized Jesus as a king, but they also brought frankincense. Frankincense is what we use in our incense. It's used to bring worship. In the temple, they had frankincense going up in the, in the temple as worship and prayers to God. They recognized that not only was Jesus a king, but he was divine. He was God. But then the third one, and this is the most important one, they brought a gift of myrrh. Myrrh is a bitter perfume. And myrrh is there. It's an anointment for burial. And they brought this to, to Jesus because they recognized that this king wasn't just a king, wasn't just God. He was also sacrificed. And that's what we see in the song, We Three Kings. In the very, very last stanza, it says, God and king and sacrifice. Jesus sacrificed himself. He came into the world to die. The Bible says he came to die so that men might live. He came to raise the sons of earth. He came to give us second birth. The first time you were born, you were born to die. If you are born again, you are now born to go through death 
into everlasting life. That's the Christmas message. That's why we celebrate. That's why we rejoice. Every Christmas, people decorate their homes. They adorn their homes with these Christmas trees and they leave gifts around the Christmas tree. Why is that? Because Jesus on a tree gave a gift on that tree, on that cross. He was the gift that keeps on giving, that gives everlasting life, that gives forgiveness of sins, that gives freedom from the bondage of chains, of addiction and iniquity and transgression and struggle and lack and helplessness and hopelessness. This Christmas, would you come to the greatest Christmas tree, the cross, and would you receive the gift that God has placed at that tree, forgiveness for your sins, salvation, deliverance, and everlasting life. It sounds too good to be true, but that's the power of the Christmas message. How do I know it's true? How can I be sure that it's true? Friend, January 1986, an 18-year-old punk surfer on a beach had a radical encounter with Jesus Christ where I came to that tree and I received into my life everything changed like that. And I know that if God will do it for me, and he's no respecter of persons, he'll do it for you. Right now, one of our campus pastors is going to come up and he's going to give you an opportunity to respond to this message. He's going to give you an opportunity to pray the prayer that I prayed all those years ago, January 1986, that radically changed my life. I hope you're ready. It's been an honor to speak to you today. God bless you. Would you welcome your campus pastors as they come up right now? Wow. What an amazing word. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Hey, listen, for more information about our church, go to www.awakenchurch.com or subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already and download our app. It is amazing. It is chock full of incredible messages, information about upcoming events, and you can even support our ministry if you feel so inclined. We loved having you with us today. We look forward to seeing you again. God bless you. Live a life that is transformative. Bye for now.